The Wall, Climb for Gold is an inspiring documentary that follows four female athletes as they prepare for the 2020 Olympics. Here's climber Shauna Coxey. Historically, the sport was male-dominated, and that's definitely changed over the years, and there's a lot of appetite for progression within the sport. I think it's so incredible that we have a film about female climbers. Um, nobody's kind of questioned me on the fact that we're all female in this film, which is kind of where we want to be. We don't want that to be something that is remarkable. It should just be normal and acceptable that this is a film about female climbers. I'll also be speaking to the film's composer, Nainita Desai, and editor, Emily West. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'm going to get that gun of mine, and I'm going to change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. Some people call me a freak. I hate that word. I don't believe in it. Better yet, I don't believe in labels. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. Because I'm up at five every morning working my ass off. Does someone want to just tell me to my face you're never going to give me the scores I deserve? Hello and welcome to Girls on Film. I'm your host, Anna Smith, and this episode is in partnership with Windfall Films, who are part of the Argonon Group. The Wall, Climb for Gold, centres around the lives, training and determination of four female climbers. It's a gripping film about the challenges these young women faced as they attempted to compete in the first ever women's Olympic climbing competition at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. It's a great female empowerment movie that's available to watch now on Apple TV and Amazon Prime Video, where it reached number one in documentaries. We are living our own life. We take our own path. I do it because I love it. Pressure is something that kind of excites me. Where are you, Brookie? You did it. You made the Olympics. There'll never be another first Olympics for climbing. I would have a place like this just for that one medal. Yanni Garmbre is the best rock climber in the world. Shauna could do the hardest moves and make them look easy. If you want to win the Olympics, you're going to have to beat me, Honan Akron. Brooke's relatively young, but also wants to win that gold medal in Tokyo. Anything could happen. As a little girl, I like to climb on everything. I was born into it. And I just looked at my dad and I was like, I want to do that. Climbing's really the ultimate sport. It tests every element of human performance. It's about exploration. It's about discovery. Climbers have got to slay all the dragons. My biggest obstacle is my mind. I'm now joined by one of the four incredible climbers, Olympic athlete Shauna Coxie, MBE, along with the film's composer, Nainita Desai, and the film's editor, Emily West. Welcome to you all to Girls on Film. First of all, Shauna, we're recording this on your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. How's your day going? Yeah, I've had a lovely day so far and it's really sunny here in Sheffield, which, um, yeah, I think was definitely just for my birthday. That's quite an unusual thing. Especially in January. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, special welcome to you. And Nanita, it's great to see you again. You last came on episode 35, I think. Welcome wow. back. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be back. It's really thrilled. Looks like you've been pretty busy in that time I have I have scored a lot of feature documentaries and some dramas and despite the last two years it's been a very very exciting period and of course the war which I'm so excited about well yeah I'm thrilled to talk to you all about this film Emily I think you're the first editor we've had on the podcast congratulations on that thank you so much I'm honored <laughs> well it's such a fascinating job it's great to have you on and I'm really looking forward to finding out more about what you do to all of you congratulations on the wall it's inspiring it's gripping I'm sure a lot of our listeners have already seen it and if they haven't they're going to love it. Shauna, let me start with you. When did the team start filming you and how did it feel to be part of this documentary? We started filming a few years before the event. So it was in the during the selection, which was in 2019, which obviously we expected to be a year in the making, not two years ahead of the Games. So being part of it, I mean, I'm actually quite reluctant to be part of documentaries. It's not something that I do very 
willingly as a, the team can probably tell you but for me it's really important to trust the team that I'm working with and kind of set some boundaries and have a really like good relationship like Nick who was filming um, he was incredibly patient and very persistent I might add as well so yeah it was really important for me to be part of it to me it was important but also to have those kind of boundaries set in place as well which I was very appreciative that they were respected very diplomatically put but obviously it was a happy experience ultimately it, it must feel quite strange though to have people constantly filming you so a bit of adjustment there I'd imagine I think when it's about you and your personal life and everything you're going through obviously there's so many struggles so bringing in new people into that space is hard but the team did such a good job my perfectionism can destroy me is struggling with shoulder injuries. She's gone from an elite athlete to almost unable to walk. I have to choose how much suffering I want to do for it. This outbreak is becoming a pandemic. Everything is closed. Nobody is allowed to train. The world went apart. This is definitely a situation that we didn't foresee. But not one that I don't think we can come out stronger on the other side of. Change is what makes us stronger. The climbers who go are going to be the pioneers. Before you could be a successful climber, now you could be an Olympic gold medalist. We have to be 100% there, 100% focused. Every mistake could be massive, it could cost you everything. When you're competing, it's just you and the wall. The film really documents us as real people. I think athletes are often put on this pedestal that we're like superhuman and we're not not quite real. But um, the film shows what we went through to get to the games and it was hard for each of us in our own way. And it really captures that. I certainly got that watching it. Everyone had different struggles and different challenges and you are all very different women. Nanita, can you talk to me a little bit about how that's reflected in the soundtrack? Yes, well, uh, what we tried to achieve with the score, first of all, was to convey the huge range of emotional highs and lows, as Shauna was saying, you know, from exhilaration to despair and the roller coaster of a journey that all the girls were experiencing. So we thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a different theme for each girl and to represent a kind of a microcosm of each girl's personality and approach and mental thought process? So I had to inhabit the girls' minds, which was See, I can't do that, but that was my impression of it. So, for example, with Shauna, please forgive me, Shauna, <laughs> you know, trying to reflect your personality from what was coming across on the screen. You're incredibly mentally and physically tough. You're very complex. You're hard-edged, steely, dogged in your persistence. You put everything on the line when it counts. And that's what I was getting from the film. And, of course, you're from up north. So the environment is tough. So we brought in subtle, industrial, metallic elements to reflect that in some aspects of the score when you came up on the screen. And if you want me to talk a little bit about the others, Anna, you know, Brooke, she's the youngest of the four of the bunch. You know, she's this talented wild card. She's soft, but there's a very driving pace in the music, which reflected her well. And her theme is infused with a really effective um, mix of drama and reflection that draws upon you to focus in on her moments. Miho is a city girl. You know, she was born and bred in Tokyo. And her ambition was always to be the strongest in what she does. So we focused on reflecting the edgy grit and modern style of the city, blending darker synths and Japanese taiko drums to evoke her going into battle and this kind of attitude that she has. But also she's a very fragile and sensitive character.
So that was interesting to try and bring out. And then Janja from Slovenia, she has this immense natural talent. And so the music had to capture the awe and the anticipation and drama of what she was becoming, this megastar. The music had to bring out the haunted darkness of her demons, where you feel a lot of introspective self-doubt. So there was a, you know, musically and, and film-wise, it's a microcosm of what it means to be human. Um, Shauna, could I just get your reaction to that? Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating to like hear Nanita talking about it, because obviously having seen the film and knowing what went into it, but having never had a conversation, um, I can't imagine how difficult it must be to kind of reflect people when you're so absorbed in kind of the material and you've kind of hit us all spot on so you definitely know what you're doing obviously but yeah it really kind of captures our own personal journeys like I said earlier we are all on such different journeys with the same goal of getting to the games with different battles um, and different backgrounds, like you said, but I think it is important that everything within the film does reflect that. Well, also crucial is, of course, the editing. Emily, I mean, can you talk us through what your job involved in this film and at what point you start getting involved in the process? So when I was uh, brought on board, a certain amount of editing had already taken place. So some of the backstories were cut for example. But at that point, Nick Hardy, the director, was wanting to film more observational material and to get more under the skin of the characters um, and into their lives a bit more. And um, to their credit, um, the exec, Dan Kendall and Nick, didn't want an all-male gaze onto an all-female subject. So... um, that informed their choice of editor and, and indeed of musician as well. And Anita and I were happily <laughs> brought on board. It's 100%. That's crazy. Hello. Where are you, Brookie? I'm in front of ISO, I guess. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> in five days, you'll get a letter saying you made the Olympics. I don't even know what to think. <laughs> Maybe yay? I don't think I'll know what to think for a while. <laughs> I don't really know how to think either, but you did it. So, um, no need to talk briefly about the themes in the music, and they came out of conversations together based on the sort of framework that we'd had for each character taking a different place in the film, because, of course, if you're telling a narrative with different characters, they need to be distinguished from each other. So all of them are passionate, all of them are resilient, you know, all of them have mental challenges, but looking at the material, and particularly, in the, you know, the editor is always the fresh eyes, so it's quite a fascinating moment to see the material, having not met anybody, and, and you're, you're, you're kind of filtering, OK, what themes are coming through in this character's story you know what are they going through and what's their emotional journey where's the emotional weight in the material and then musically that that was picked up on with Nonita and um, hopefully uh, we told an honest and um, respectful (laughs) story in the meantime. I would say so and the fact that Sean is here I think is a thumbs up it's a seal of approval (laughs) and she's got a smile on her face as well so that bodes well. If you get injured and you still want that gold medal you still want to get to the Olympics it makes you really want it even more because you've got to work a lot harder to get there. I did it! We felt incredibly involved with all these wonderful personalities, you know, and it's great to know that there's a wonderful team behind it as well. You both show such empathy for your subjects. You want an audience to empathise with your characters. That's 101, you know, like, where is the dramatic story? But it's essential as well, and even more with an observational film, is how to make an audience empathise with the people and understand them, you know. And that's what's challenging. There's a lot of material gets shot, so you're watching an awful lot and having to kind of hone in on particular things that someone said or particular actions that happened for them and sort of working with those very small moments within hundreds of hours. <laughs> you must have to be incredibly patient to do your job. And that's what I'm getting from this. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. All your jobs. We've got, we've got three very determined women here in different fields. Yanya's always been just incredible to watch climbing. She really understands the movement. She is 
pretty much the best of the best right now. And she's able to consistently perform at her best, which is something that every athlete wants because consistency is really hard. The first time that I met Shauna, I idolized her and honestly still do. <laughs> she was one of the best competitors and has been for a while. It's funny because I guess we are competing at the same level, but I have so much to learn from her. Shauna, when you watched the final film, what kind of memories did it bring back? How did you feel? I actually watched it um, for the first time at the premiere, so in Kendall at the Mountain Film Festival, um, the European premiere, which was, I kind of didn't prepare myself for how overwhelming it would be. And I think I knew, like, I knew what was in the film. I'd seen little clips and little bits, but I'd not seen the whole thing through. And I was still kind of processing post-Olympics. Um, and, you know, that's a, a lot to take in and the whole road that it had been to get there. And it was also my last competitive event as a professional climber before I kind of transitioned into rock climbing. So, yeah, there was a lot going on. Um, so I, I prepared myself somewhat for watching the film, but what I hadn't appreciated was how it would be received by the audience and being in that space with people in tears, people laughing. It was really emotional and overwhelming. But yeah, I was just like Emily was saying, there's so much empathy within the film that you don't need to be a climber to appreciate this film. You don't need to understand climbing. You just need to be human. And I think because of the pandemic and because we're going through things that people can really easily relate to, you know, everybody was going through the pandemic together. So yeah, I think it kind of brings that connectedness into it. And yeah, it was just so incredibly well received and, and has been since as well. It is such a relatable film. And I mean, I look at what you do and I'm in absolute awe because I'm not sporty at all and you are incredible. But, you know, even if you know absolutely nothing about climbing, there's so much to relate to in this film, as you were saying, Shauna, and so much to admire and to seek inspiration from in terms of overcoming obstacles. Um, let me come back to Nanita. Um, for people watching the documentary, either again or for the first time, are there any specific moments for them to listen out for, any bits you're especially proud of that kind of really serve the story in a crucial way? Oh, God, all of it. Good answer, <laughs> I mean, all it was, of it. <laughs> you know, scoring this film, I mean, there's a lot of music in the film. It's just non-stop. So I think one of the biggest challenges was to take you on this roller coaster journey where you're not just being bombarded with a wall of music, haha, to coin upon all the time but to take you on this emotional journey seeing these human beings perform at the extremes of what's possible physically and with the, the mental struggles to overcome all that I think as you say Anna we're treated to a more universal struggle and strife narrative here and we can all connect with that and I think what the Olympians must overcome from the injuries to mental roadblocks it's always mind over matter so scoring this film was like doing my own rock climbing in many ways and and trying to overcome those musical challenges and try to get the audience to relate emotionally and take you on that emotional journey with Sean and the other climbers so you know as they start to focus and believe in themselves the music carries hope beautifully put Obviously, we are girls on film. To me, I think in many respects, this film has something to say about sisterhood, about feminism, about incredible women. I mean, it's, it's just watching empowered women, isn't it? It's fantastic, you know, and we don't have to emphasise the point. I think we don't really interview anybody about what it's like to be a woman in the climbing world. Or I thought it was interesting that um, I had an impression as a non-sporty... I mean, I totally fell in love with climbing, by the way, doing this film. I'm not doing it myself because I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a sporty type, but I will definitely watch it at every possible, you know. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just wonderful to, in a way, uh, not have to emphasise the fact that people were female, um, and to just, to just enjoy the empoweredness of that without underlining it. I think it was, you know, it's obvious, isn't it? I think that, yeah, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? For things not to be remarkable in that respect. It's just amazing people doing amazing things and how great they happen to be women. A few days ago, we talked about it again. What's 
happening in her head. And uh, she just doesn't see a challenge that she could show everyone what she trained for. That's definitely a part of her perfectionism. She wants to show that she's the best. I must say that my biggest obstacle is my mind. Tako. Ai, dai, 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 dai. Tako. Krabutas plezant, tak. Tak čudno. Ja, glej. Penti. Svedo, da si zdaj ne boš pomagala iz principa, ne? I had the impression that there weren't many women climbers before, and then I realised sort of over the process of the film that actually maybe they just weren't featured, like watching Catherine Desterville and, you know, I thought, well, maybe it's like those pilots, women pilots in World War Two, and you, you just don't hear about them, but they were there, you know? <laughs> like, it's like, um, I don't know if that's true, Shauna, you know, that whether it was male-dominated, but I have a feeling it was in the representation as well. Yeah, historically, um, the sport was male-dominated, as have been many sports. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely changed over the years, and it's something that I've actually been very actively part of um, over 10 years ago now, I set up a women's climbing event called the Women's Climbing Symposium with just 50 women at the event. And in recent years, we've had up to 500 women there and it sells out every year, you know. There's a lot of appetite for progression within the sport and climbing is still a young sport. There's still a lot of improvement that can be made from a diversity and accessibility perspective. But you're saying that you haven't been climbing. My question is, why not? Because, you know, it's a sport for everybody. Um, and it is something that everybody can try, everybody can do it. So this film, you know, it showcases the elite of the sport and kind of the very upper end. But you see kids, they want to climb everything. Even you're not supposed to when you're little, but that doesn't go away. It's part of us as human beings. Like climbing is such a natural thing to do. And I do think it's really important to have representation within the sport. I think it's so incredible that we have a film about female climbers that's kind of, it's not questioned as to why it's about female climbers. It's about climbers that are pursuing this goal. And nobody's kind of questioned me on the fact that we're all female climbers in this film, which like you said, Anna, is kind of where we want to be. We don't want that to be something that is remarkable it should just be normal and acceptable that this is a film about female climbers i think one of the most wonderful things was seeing attending the premiere at kendall and there were so many men coming out loving shauna and the climbers regardless of their gender you know it's a universal sport and that's what's so refreshing about it and that there's no bias you know that men are fans of female climbers and vice versa you know it, unlike other sports i think you know it's just really lovely to see that it is fantastic. It's definitely inspiring and jaw-dropping to watch. I just wanted to finish by actually, Shauna, I read that you were inspired to get into the sport by watching a film yourself. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Watching a female French climber climbing cliffs in Africa on TV. My dad and I would always watch the adventure sports channels. Um, he was into like motorbikes and trials riding, so we'd have it on all the time. Um, and then, yeah, one time there was climbing on the TV and actually it was probably what made me want to be part of this more than anything else is that this is how I found the sport. I saw it on yeah. TV. It's exciting, isn't it? To think that this film may spawn, you know, the talent of the future. Who knows? Who could, maybe it'll be the next, no, not quite the next Olympic champion, but one in a few years <laughs> time, maybe. Um, Emily, any last words from you about the documentary, particularly for our lovely listeners? Well, I, 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 I was picking up on what you just said, actually, that um, I was hoping really from an early point when I realised how wonderful this the sport was and how it uses so many faculties in the body you know so many more than a lot of other sports and I just wanted I one of the things that I you know notes to self I had was I want to make the audience fall in love with climbing you know <laughs> that was a lot of the conversation around the beginning of the film you know and, and how we open it how we created this kind of slightly lyrical um, intros that magic you know the magic of the mountains and etc so uh, I really hope that people do fall in love with it through this film. And then I'd be very happy if, 
<laughs> if lots of people started climbing, including my, I need to go out myself and try it now. <laughs> Sean must tell me to do it. You've been told now, you have to do it. <laughs> Well, if anyone's listening and they are inspired, then do get in touch. We'd love to hear your feedback. And um, listen, it's been such a pleasure to speak to the three of you. And Shauna, enjoy the rest of your birthday. Have a lovely time. Have a great celebration. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, Shauna. Happy birthday, Shauna. I was talking with Shauna Coxie, Nanita Desai and Emily West. You can watch The Wall, Climb for Gold on Apple TV and Amazon Prime now. The soundtrack is available on Spotify as well as four separate singles, as Nanita was explaining. (music) Girls on Film is an HLA production brought to you by executive producer Hedda Archbold, audio producer Benjamin Cook, assistant producer Shania Pifia, and our partners for this episode, Windfall Films, part of the Argonon Group. I'm Anna Smith, and I was joined by composer Nanita Desai, editor Emily West, and Olympic medalist Shauna Coxie, MBE. Thank you, lovely listeners. Stay safe. My perfectionism can destroy me. (laughs) 